Erica Fernandez with CCIC Communications, and today we're live in the classroom, Mrs. Hill's Algebra 2 class at Clearview High School. Ms. Hill, thank you so much for having us today. Thank you for coming. So um, tell us a little bit about what you guys are learning about right now. So we're looking at exponential growth and decay. So we're looking at how things get big really quickly or small really quickly. We've been studying about it, but now we're looking at the real world, what that means to us, what, what it means in the real world if something grows exponentially or decays exponentially. And what type of activity will they be doing today? They'll be folding paper and looking at how quickly it builds up, how many layers you get, how many layers, how many times would you have to fold it to reach the moon. And how did you come up with this lesson plan? <laughs> <laughs> it's just one that I'd heard about. It, it kind of surprises people how quickly things grow when they grow exponentially. Okay. All right. Well, we'll let you go ahead and get started then. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So everybody's got a piece of paper? So there's a myth that says that you can't fold it in half more than seven times. So if you fold it in half, and then you fold it in half again, how many times can you keep doing that? So that's one, and then we'd get two if we fold it in half again. Can anybody beat seven? I didn't count, I'll be honest. Okay, so, so go ahead and count. Okay, count. Count as you fold it in half. How many times can you do it? Seven doesn't seem like very many. Can you get, it, get more than seven? So it's two, then I'd get three, it gets harder, doesn't it? It gets thick. Then I get four. Then I get five. Mine's getting really thick. I don't think I can go more than about six. Can they go? Can you get to seven? I got to six. You got to six? Yeah, at six it starts getting really thick. Oh, I got it. <laughs> you can get one more? Yeah. Anybody go. beat seven? How many times would we have to fold it to get to the moon? What do you think? To seven. <laughs> seven times? Do you think this, this is thick enough One to reach more. the moon? <laughs> One more and I'll get up there. So we're going to look at like how many layers. What's, what's happening to our layers as we fold it? When I, when I take it the first time, so I've got one piece of paper, right? When I fold it in half, now I've got two layers. If I fold it again, I've got four layers. If I fold it again, it's doubling each time, right? I've got eight layers and then 16 layers. So each time it's multiplying by two, it's doubling. So we're going to work on an activity. We're going to see how many times you have to fold it to get to the moon. We're also going to look at how thick the paper gets and we're going to look at what happens to the size of the paper because the paper's half as big each time you fold it. How many times would you have to fold it before it's smaller than a grain of sand? Probably It's getting smaller and smaller as you fold it. Theoretically. You can't fold it to make it as small as a grain of sand. It gets really hard, doesn't it? Oh, you meant like, oh, no mind. It's got to be at least like three. So has anybody ever seen Mythbusters? Yes. Mythbusters tried it. I'll show you a clip from them in a little bit. I'll show you, show you when they when they tried it. Maybe if you use like a hydraulic press, you like this. <laughs> That's right. If you could flatten it enough, <laughs> that's kind of what they did. They rolled a steamroller over it to try to get it flat. To try to try to get, and they started with a really big page. They started with a football page, football si field size sheet of paper. They figured it would make it easier to fold if they had it started with a big piece of paper. <laughs> okay, so why don't you guys work on the worksheet? See if you can figure out what's 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 our equation going to be? Uh, <coughs> what, what was our initial value? What did we start off with? One. Yes, yeah, so our initial value is one. So then, what's it growing by? Growing by two to the x, right? That's going to be the equation. I need a calculator. One times two to the x. Uh, 
just a little help to it. It's, it's going by halves. By halves, okay. Do you know how to get out of that? No. You can either reset the calculator, second plus 712, or you can do second table set. And we want to go back to zero and then do second graph. So we started with one layer, right? And then we fold it in in half. And so when we fold it in half, now I have two layers, right? So that one's going to be two. And then I fold it in half again. So I've got one, two, three, four layers, right? And then fold it in half, four and four. So I've got eight layers. Each time it's going to multiply by two. So 16. And 32 and 64 and some new calculator. And so the equation that we're going to get is y equals 1 times 2 to the x. What did you guys think the domain was? my x's, right? So how many times can I fold it? Right. Starting with zero folds, right? At least two. And theoretically up to infinity, because we don't really know what the, the, the limit is. So zero to infinity? Your domain would be zero onward and mm -hmm. zero times the one onward. Yeah, you're right. Also, what is this number? So you got 1.6. So then, let's see, if you folded it 24 times, so you get 1.6 times e to the 7. That's 1, one with, with seven zeros after it. So then we're going to multiply it by the thickness to figure out how thick the paper is going to be. So we're going to multiply this number by 0.000001. Okay, so this, this number is with the 1.6 times 10 to the 7. Okay, and so then multiply that one by the point zero 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 one. See, that's the thickness of the paper. So if we get that many layers times the thickness of the paper, we can see how thick it would be. One second. Let's see. Can we go? Can we go back up to this number though? Because it doesn't have the decimal. Though. Go back to, hit enter. Can we do 2 to the 24 again? Do 2 to the 24. And then do times 0 .000, 000 six zeros and a 1. Yeah. So it's 1.67 kilometers. That's about a mile. Yeah, times two each time, right? So okay, each one's going to be times two. Yeah. Okay, I need a little help wording. Okay. For domain, domain is our x's, so it's going to be zero to infinity. And then the range is going to be one to infinity. Yep, yep, parentheses. Yep, yep. And then range is one to infinity. Yep. And so then they want you to graph plot these points on this graph. Yep, yep, so at zero it's going to be up at one. At one it's going to be up at two. Yep, two it's up at four. Yep, good, good. Thirty-two. You got it. Good. And six is up at sixty-four. Perfect. Nice. You got it. Got the graph. Cool. So, so you're gonna have. If we put twenty-four in for X, you're gonna have two to the twenty-four layers. 
for this. So what's 2 to the 24th? 48. 48. No, to 2 to the 24. It's a big number, right? Oh. Yeah, and then you're going to multiply that times the thickness to find out how thick your piece of paper is going to be. Oh, okay. Uh, I think you lost one zero right there. Okay, go up one more. Yeah, hold on to it. And then they do times three zeros. Point one, two, three, four, five, six. And then one. Yep. So it's going to be 1.67 kilometers. That's about a mile. You can look on the map and see how far away, how far away we reach. The domain, is that one X or Y? Domain's the X. Okay. <laughs> so, so, do you live within a mile of the school? No. No, nope, so, 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 no. So then, yeah, for this one, we're going to say 2 to the x equals, so, so how far away is the moon? 382,500? 382,500. And we're going to divide it by the thickness, 0. 0.1234561. I don't know how far away What's that? I don't know how far away I live from the school. <laughs> you, you, you're not on the map, then you're more than a mile. <laughs> this is 1.67 kilometers is about a mile, so you must be further than a mile. So where is that? Well, I mean, this, you can look right there. It says that well, this yeah. is one kilometer. So if you were within this distance of the, the school... Right? Yeah, but I'm not even on the map. I don't yeah, that's what I'm saying. So if you're not on the map, you're not within a mile. <laughs> if you're further than the map goes. How, would it, so would it reach from the school to your house? No. So for this one, you're going to follow that equation and solve for x. Right? What x would make that true? What, what x would make that go to the moon? So you want to find out. 2 to the x equals, you could put it into de Desmos, or you could do it into y equals on the calculator. No? Put, no? Put it into y equals. Okay. And so then we want to know, what is 382,500 divided by 0 0.000? We're joined now with Principal Monica Speaks here of Clearview High School. Ms. Speaks, you were telling me a little bit about Mrs. Hill. Um, can you fill us in a little bit? Absolutely. Ms. Hill has a rich history. Uh, she graduated from MIT and um, she started a career in engineering. And she's worked with NASA and decided at some point to change her career. And she's been at Clearview for about seven or eight years. Yeah, and I think that goes, uh, just proves that our educators here across UCISD have incredible backgrounds Absolutely. and experience that prepare them for these types of careers with education. Um, tell us a little bit about Clearview. We're seeing the classrooms are mm -hmm. smaller, right? There's only 10 students inside there. Mm -hmm. Why is it so important for the students here at Clearview to have that smaller learning environment? Yes, Clearview is a, a unique opportunity for students to um, have a fresh start, have that ability to connect with teachers in ways that have been challenging for them, maybe at our, our bigger campuses where classes were 25 to 30 kids. Um, now they're more uh, eager to participate, to engage in conversations and activities, to ask questions, and the teacher is able to, as you saw, go about and, and speak with each child and really see what their individual needs are to ensure that they have deep learning. Yeah, and how have you seen that one-on-one -on -one connection? I mean, just right now, we see that Ms. Hill is able to interact with the students, connect with them, they you know, respond back to her. How have you seen that really prepare those students for the future once they graduate? Absolutely. Well, first of all, because we're an application-based school, I get to interview these students at the beginning, and so I see some of the um, mindsets that they come to us with and the ambivalence that they have, and so to be able to engage in classes like Ms. Hill and other classes 
builds up their confidence, their um, finding their voice, eager to communicate with one another and come out of their shells. Mm -hmm. And they were a leader in these schools, so they're also yeah. benefiting from those seven habits um, and activities that we um, engage them in. Mm -hmm. And they really are getting suited and ready for post-secondary opportunities. Yeah, and we're approaching graduation very soon. Absolutely. So some of these students are getting ready to tackle uh, whatever lies ahead for them. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you so much for letting us stop by Clearview High School today. That wraps up today's Facebook Live. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.